In addition to living with your immediate family, you're living with a large extended family, uh, almost under the same roof. Who, who in that larger family had an impact on you? Yeah. Uh, we lived, we owned t two houses, my grandmother and her sister, when they moved from Mississippi, bought two houses next door to each other. And, uh, and then there was a small plot of land where my grandmother kept a garden. So, you know, it's almost hard to imagine there in the urban jungle of Chicago, there were these two uh, uh, houses and a garden there. And uh, there must have been, gosh, uh, between the uncles and my grandmother's uh, uh, children, seven or eight adults, my mother being the youngest in that uh, family system. And then, of course, my mother and father. We lived in my grandmother's household for a long period as they saved money in order to kind of move up and, and, and out. So it really felt like a compound in which there were a lot of uh, people uh, looking out for us and meals uh, were huge uh, evening affairs, uh, usually all together, but often because people were working and coming and going. Uh, you know, a few people sitting, uh, but, and with neighbors joining us uh, because we had a front porch and we'd mm -hmm. often eat out there. But your question, who influenced, it really was my, uh, my, my maternal grandmother, Martha McCann. And the, the thing that was remarkable about her was her ability to, she was sort of, as Du Bois might talk about it, had bicultural competence. Mm -hmm. She... Um, really knew the language and uh, the ways of, of the kind of secular streets of Chicago as well as the world of the church and the very um, uh, kind of uh, staid and, and proper existence of, of the church world. She was a, an office holder in the local congregation, head of the mother's board, popular in many black churches. And uh, so she was a kind of charismatic leader. People gravitated to her. Some of her own sons who lived in our house were, um, uh, you know, these were tough guys and they had uh, friends. They liked to drink on weekends. And so often in our household on that front porch, you'd have these uh, women from the church meeting with Mother McCann in their starched white uh, suits, you know, uniforms and nurses' caps. and along with the local winos of the, of, mm -hmm. you know, from the neighborhood, all on that, on that porch together enjoying fried chicken, collard greens, and, and, and sweet potato pie. And it, it, it struck me, gosh, you know, our home is more inclusive than the church is because mm -hmm. the church wouldn't have been a comfortable place for these young men uh, to show up, certainly not inebriated. And it just struck me that she was this bridge figure the bringing people together who ordinarily wouldn't sit at a common table. And is she, by this example, teaching you a, a kind of tolerance that you might otherwise not have had? Uh, absolutely. I, I thought there's a tremendous potential in this kind of, uh, this, this, this style of communicating and making oneself available. It's a style of leadership um, that, uh, that has a high threshold of tolerance for for difference and different practices and inclinations. My favorite story, i say very briefly, was one day, you know, this is during the time in gang fights during, in Chicago, two uh, warring gangs, the dis gangster disciples and the Blackstone Rangers, were uh, about to go to, to blows in, uh, on the corner near our house. And my grandmother, again, perched on the, po on the porch, sort of looking out on the neighborhood, uh, saw this, heard the argument escalating, five or six of these guys from each side. And uh, she you know, ran off that porch right into the middle of these guys who were you know, nose to nose almost, and uh, diffused that conflict and spoke, talked those boys down. And one of the interesting things she did was she knew some of these boys by name. She had uh, given food from her garden to their mothers. Mm -hmm. And I, it just struck me that grandma had moral authority. 
because she had uh, watched these guys when they were cute, smart little boys going to mm -hmm. kindergarten. Uh, she had disciplined them. She had fed them. She probably employed them over the years. So she now had the moral authority to speak truth to that kind of power. Mm -hmm. And they, they backed away. They walked away, you know, certain to fight another day. But, yeah. but that day, Grandma, it was her, her, her moment to say, no, not here, not now. Uh, she urged them, you know, she, she made appeals like, uh, what would your, think of how your mother would feel if she were to receive a call that you were fatally, you know, wounded in, in this kind of uh, fight. So it just, I saw her kind of appeal to something good in these uh, young men. It just strikes me even today with world conflicts that uh, America as a superpower, uh, we may be you know, superior at the level of military power, but we, if we don't have moral authority, we can't convene parties and really talk them down from their inclination to fight. So Grandma had a message for these international leaders, I think. Mm, it's a shame she's not around Indeed. today. <laughs>